you so very much for tuning in here today at Church on the Rock. If this is your first time, let me encourage you to go to JesusOfTheRock.org. There you can find out all sorts of information on our ministries, or you can give to our church financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us, and welcome to Church on the Rock. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn to the book of Revelation. That would be the last book in your Bible. Revelation chapter 2, and I want to read just a few verses tonight. This is where John the Revelator, the Lord is speaking through John to the seven churches, and he speaks to the church at Ephesus, and he says, I know all the things, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2 says, I know all the things you do. I've seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You've examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You've discovered they are liars. You've patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nickelodeons just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. And I really want to focus on verse 5 tonight. He says, look, 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 pay attention to, look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. Three things he said to Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did At first, how many of you have woke up one day, looked around, and said, I can't believe I'm here again? I can't believe I'm here again. Can't believe I'm here repenting for this again. Can't believe I'm saying sorry for this again. Can't believe I'm in this situation again. Got myself out of debt one time. Here I am again. Got got out of one bad relationship. Here I am again. Just got out of one bad marriage. Here I am again. Got out of a horrible job, here I am again. Lost 40 pounds, but here I am again. I told somebody the other day, I bet I've lost 300 pounds in my life. But I keep finding myself, I keep finding it again. I've been on a diet for the last 30 years. We find ourselves saying, how did I get here again? So tonight... I want to talk for just a few minutes about how do we avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Our little picture tonight, got it back up, it says you must be willing to change your behavior to win. That was my confirmation today as I really sat this morning and started just kind of putting this thought together and and I happened to go on Facebook at some point during the day, and I saw this little clip. You must be willing to change your behavior to win. And I said, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So tonight, for a few minutes, I want to talk about how can we avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over again. First thing, we must be willing to change our behavior to win. See, it's one thing to make a mistake. 
We all do that. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. But how can we avoid making these monumental, life-changing mistakes over and over and over again? Because have you noticed? It's the huge mistakes we tend to repeat. It's it's these big things. Um, Small mistakes, it seems that we can sort of make them, suddenly realize we made them and not make them again. You know, I... I, I, uh, I touch the eye of a hot stove because it's so red and pretty. And, you know, and I do that, and I don't really do that over and over again because I find out that's not fun. That hurts. And, but it's these huge mistakes, these life-changing mistakes that involve others, that have far-reaching effects, that, that, that really, t- that's the ones we tend to repeat over and over again. And tonight, I, wanna, I just want to discuss real briefly why that is. What causes us to repeat these same mistakes? First and foremost, we must be willing to change our behavior. You know, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. We have to be willing to change. Now, to do this tonight, to to figure out how to avoid this, I want to talk about three myths that sometimes cause us to repeat our mistakes. Three lies or three myths. Number one, we'll call the experience myth. And sometimes we'll, we'll tell ourselves or we'll tell others, well, I have experience now. I've experienced failure. I've experienced bankruptcy before. I've, I've gone through a divorce. I've seen firsthand what adultery can do. I've experienced how not being honest can hurt you. I've, therefore, because I've experienced it, I'm safe. I don't have to worry about that anymore because I've been through that. Everybody say, that's a myth. That's a myth. If you don't believe it, ask an addict. Ask an alcoholic. Ask them if, if being an alcoholic helps them to not drink. Ask a compulsive eater. Ask anybody that has some type of addiction. I want you to understand tonight, experience alone does not make you wiser. It makes you older. It can make you sadder. More broke. Experience alone, it might make you bitter. But experience alone will not necessarily make you wiser. Gray hair does not necessarily equal wisdom. I know some old fools. Right? What will make you wiser is calculated experience. Looking at your mistakes. Looking at what led up to the mistake. Looking at at what happened. what, What caused me? What happened before I really made the mistake or realized I had made a mistake? Was it when I quit praying? Was it when I got out of church? Was it when I left? What what was it that caused that? Looking at that experience, looking at my mistakes and and, and dissecting them and, and, you know, trying to figure out what it was that led up to it and creating a plan to help you not go down that same road again. Uh, These things can help you to not repeat the mistake, but experience alone is not enough. Again, John the Revelator said, look how far you've fallen. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. Look at that. Don't just forget about, you know, what you did. Look at it. Look how far. Change. Do things differently. Don't just hope that things will turn out different this time. You turn them out different. You be different. You change that. Myth number two. Myth number two is what we'll call the knowledge myth. So I don't have to worry about it because I know better. I know better. I know that's dangerous. I know that's bad for me. I know the consequences that a decision like this can bring. I know how bad this can turn out. And because I know this, I don't have to worry about it. Everybody say, that's a myth. Let's examine that theory for a minute. How many know that texting while driving is dangerous? How many have done it? How many still do it sometimes? 
How many are lying? <laughs> How many know that smoking is bad for your health? How many have done it? How many know that overindulging in foods that are bad for you is dangerous? How many do it on a regular basis? How many know that overworking is bad for you? Overplaying is bad for you. Over, ex over anything is bad for you. Anything in excess can become sinful. Over, over, over sunbathing, over, over anything hurts you. And we know this. But knowledge alone is not enough. There's something in the makeup of human beings that has the ability to overlook knowledge and to, to veto what we know and ignore reason and walk eyes wide open into the trap that the enemy sets for us. The Scripture tells us that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word and not knowers only. It's not enough just to know what's right. you got to know. you got to do what's right. It's one thing to know what's right and know what's wrong, but we have to purpose in our heart to do what's right and to run from what's wrong. That's why when, when we try to tell our kids something, you ever try to tell your kids something, try to tell your kids, you know, don't drink and drive, please. Don't drink, please don't text while driving. It's dangerous. There are people being killed every day. Please wear your seatbelt. Do this. And, and what do they say? Mom, Dad, I know. Right? I know. You tell them something, everything you tell them, they say, I know. Dad, I know. And you try to, you try to help them understand knowing does not necessarily equal doing. I know you know, but I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to not do. Just knowing something is not enough. That's why some people go from one bad relationship to another, to another, to another, and you talk to them and they say, uh, what's wrong with all these people? Everybody I date. It's crazy. Well, a couple of things. One, you picked him, so maybe you're a bad picker. Or option two, they may not be the problem. The problem may be staring you back in the mirror. You keep carrying bad habits from one relationship to another, to another, to another, and you know that, but knowing them doesn't equal doing them. You won't change things. In fact, the Bible tells us that to him that knows to do good and doesn't do it, to that person, it's sin. When you know something is right and you don't do it, it's sinful. It's not just dangerous, it's sinful. And I'm not making this stuff up, I'm just reading it out of the Bible. Okay, myth number three. I told you we're going to be short tonight, but short doesn't mean unimportant. This can be very important for us. Myth number three, I think, is the time myth. The time myth. It often causes us to repeat our same mistakes over and over and over again, especially in the case of relationships and major decisions. We start thinking and telling ourselves that time is my enemy. Time is running out. I have to do something quick. My biological clock's ticking. I have to find a relationship soon. I'm not getting any younger. I have to move now. And, and what we do is we talk ourselves into settling for less than God's best because we think I've got to do something now. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans that are good and not of evil, so you may have a hope and a future. But we allow the enemy to rob us of our hope and steal our future by knocking us off track and keeping us out of God's plan, and he does that using our impatience because I've got to move now. I've got to do something quick. I've got to do this. I'm not getting any younger. I've got to, and, and, and we think time is our enemy. Time is your friend. Time is your friend. Use that time to step back and pray and look at the situation and say, is this wise? 
We had, did a whole series on wisdom one time. It's more than asking, is it right or is it wrong, but is it wise? Is it wise for me? Is it wise right now? When my financial situation isn't wise, coming out of the relationship I just came out of isn't wise. Is this wise for me right now? What's wise for you may not be wise for me. What's wise for me may not be wise for you. We have to use that time to evaluate every situation. Sometimes the best thing we can do is step back and just breathe. Stop and look at the situation. Evaluate our past experiences. Make a plan, or better yet, establish what God's plan is for my life. What is God's plan for my life? And once you know what's right and you know what's wrong, once you know what's healthy and what's unhealthy, once you know what's wise and what's unwise, then do it. Do what's what right. Do what's healthy. Do what's wise. God said, look how far you've fallen. Look. Don't just cast that out. He said, stop and look. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. He said, the one thing I have against you is you don't love me or others the way you used to. The King James says you lost your first love. You don't love me or love others the way you did at first. If you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. What does that mean? Not sure. It doesn't sound good, does it? I don't want God removing my lampstand, my light, my life, my place from anywhere. Take a pause. Don't rush into a major decision. Evaluate your past experiences your past mistakes, your past failures, they can be your friend. Look at your past successes, the things you've done right. Once you know what you need to do, then do it. Stop thinking about it. Stop praying about it. Stop asking everybody and their brother what you ought to do about it. Stop getting on Facebook and posting about it and asking everybody to please respond and like this and tell me, comment and tell me what I should do. Most of the time, we don't need somebody to tell us what to do. We know what to do. We have the knowledge. Now, do it or stop doing it. We really kind of complicate things that are not complicated. Let the next chapter of your life not be filled with the same regrets and the sadness of the last chapter. But let it be filled with joy and peace and contentment. Let's not find ourselves here at some point in the future looking back on yet another season of our life and saying, I can't believe I'm here again. I can't believe I've walked into this same thing again. I can't believe I'm having to repent for this again. Let's find a way to stop the legacy of pain, to stop the bleeding, to stop. Look at how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. And that's all. Don't believe the myths. Don't believe just because I've experienced that before, I won't ever experience it again. Don't believe just because I know better, I don't have to worry about it. And don't believe that I've got to do something right now. No matter if it's right or wrong, I'm going to move right now. Sometimes we need to pause, step back, and look. Look. Look at how far you've fallen. Don't just keep rushing and rushing and rushing and making one bad decision and telling one lie to get out of another lie and getting out of this and getting into that. Stop. Back up. Evaluate it. Look at it. And then do it. Amen? Amen. God, thank you for your word. It's just a thought. 
But the more I seek you, the more I find you. And the more I find you, the more I love you. What a song. God, just save us from seeking everything but you. Save us from just seeking your hands and not your face. From seeking what you can do for us to seeking who you are and who you want to be in us. Because the more we seek you, the more we'll find you. And the more we find you, the more we'll love you. So God, help us that we don't have to look back on another season of our lives with regret and sorrow and pain and hurt. But God, let us look to the season that we're in now and to the seasons that lie ahead. God, let us walk in wisdom and in peace and in joy. And we ask it in your name we pray. Amen. Again, we're so incredibly glad you decided to join us here today at Church on the Rock. Now, if this message blessed you in any way, let us hear about it. You can email pray at jesusoftherock.org or you can look us up on Facebook or Twitter, Church on the Rock, Pascagoula. Now, I pray that God shows you awesome ways to apply this message to your everyday life.